All right. The second story is actually a good news story. I have a good news story for you guys. Holy shit. Uh, so a couple months ago, I think uh, I've talked about this several times on, on the live streams. If, if you guys have caught them, um, there were three activists in Aurora, Colorado that were arrested and facing like 70 some odd years in prison for various misdemeanor charges, a couple of felony charges that were basically dealt with them peacefully protesting because because that's the thing you do in the freest country in the world is you imprison dissenters. You arrest dissenters in your country because that shows that nothing says democracy like arresting First Amendment uh, people standing up with their First Amendment rights. Uh, but the big one that they uh, that they got was they got a kidnapping charge. Uh, apparently, they said 18 police officers were, were were being kidnapped and held against their will because uh, because the cops felt uncomfortable when they were chanting and they were they had their signs and some of them might have had glitter on it. And, and, and what if I got out there and some of the glitter got on my shoes and it tracked into my house and there's glitter everywhere? My wife thinks I'm sleeping with a, 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 a stripper. Yeah, I, I mean, I am, but I don't want my wife to find out. Not like this. Oh, I feel so kidnapped. Like, the, I, I love that the, the notion of the cops is supposed to be like their big, tough, fucking, you know, macho, bravado, whatever. You know, I'll I'll snort a line of whiskey kind of fucking people. But when it comes to, like, protesters outside the police station, they're like, ooh, so uh, it's scary. What if the rhythm gets me? They're big Gloria Estefan fans, right? What if the rhythm gets me? Oh, no. What if I get a beat it stuck in my head and I and I find the joy of music and stop killing minority? Oh, oh, no. So clearly they didn't kidnap anybody. They just kind of put that fucking charge out there. The, the fact that it had to go to court shows you how much of a joke this criminal justice system even is. So um, I talked about the last time I talked about these guys, Lillian House, uh, Joel Northam, uh, Eliza Lucero, and I guess there's a fourth person, Terrence Roberts, that was included in these charges as well. And uh, I, I told you guys about how they dropped the kidnapping charges because they were like, uh, no, no, come on, this is crazy. And then they dropped the kidnapping charges. But a bunch of the felony charges and misdemeanor charges were still, they, they still kept those and were going to take them to trial and stuff. But now... Uh, Brian Mason of the 17th Judicial District has dropped all of the felony charges for them due to lack of evidence, right? Like, which which happens a lot in these cases. So it's literally just a waste of time. I mean, they did the shit to the Black Panthers, right? Bobby Seale was was it was it was a show trial in Chicago, um, you know, where they like chained up Bobby Seale and shit. But they basically had no evidence of any sort of wrongdoing. You know, it was just sort of a way to uh, tie them up in, in legal charges, in long, lengthy court cases, so they can't actually go out there and serve their community. Because, um, you know, at that point, Bobby Seal's survival programs were doing really, really well. So they do this sort of stuff often. And, it, and it's basically to, like, delay any sort of... Um, any sort of real activism that can be done, any sort of real community organizing that can be done, you know, like if 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 you have the means to go out there and start a food program or, you know, help the homeless and stuff like that, that sort of stuff gets delayed because now you're stuck in, in, a, in a legal battle and you have to pay for lawyers and things of that sort. So that's the whole point of it. Like they know this is a bullshit charge, but they don't give a shit because the justice system works in a way where they're going to, they're going to, you know, go after protesters anyway. And there's still 12 misdemeanor charges that remain. But I can't see those. I mean, if the felony charges are dropped, I I, I just can't see those being a pet. Like, what are you, like, you going to, what are you even going to charge them with? Like, what a waste of time this has become for everybody, you know? So, uh, I, I, I am, 
I am very excited to see this. I would like to see this go one step further. Uh, instead of them fucking arresting protesters if they went after, I don't know, the cops that brutally tortured and killed Elijah McClain. I don't know. Maybe we prosecute those motherfuckers. What if we did that? What a fun, exciting thing for America to try, right? And I know people are going to be like, ah, Derek Chauvin, though. Fucking Derek Chauvin. And it's like, yeah, the one, the one fucking cop in, in decades of police brutality. You got the one. Great. Awesome. That That's that's great. But they're, you know, they're, where are the charges even being brought up on the cops that clearly drugged this kid, ha 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 detained him illegally, killed him, and they're still walking around. Mean, meanwhile, uh, three activists that peacefully protested outside a police station are still are, they still have misdemeanor charges against them. Again, if you want proof that this judicial system and this legal system is a fucking joke, here this is the case that kind of proves it. If you want to know why we keep talking about like changing the whole fucking system top to bottom, this case proves why. Holly, uh, R.I.P. Elijah McClain. Yes, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it, this, it sucks. You know, like, you know, it, it, the, he was a sweet kid and he got killed for no fucking reason other than uh, racism. Uh, Holly also says, prosecutor says Andrew Brown shooting what's justified will not release the tape. They shot him in the back of the head. Yeah, that's the thing is like them not releasing the tape again and i and i i mentioned this i think on a uh, a dispatcher or, or, or a, a podcast recently is that's the lesson they learned from george floyd don't release the tapes stop making this shit public because if you make this shit public then the evidence is out there and you can't get a quote unbiased jury you know unbiased to what like if we saw the cop fucking murder somebody we're going to be like, yeah, a cop fucking murdered somebody and should be in prison because they're a fucking murderer. Like what? Unbiased to what? Is this, I never understood that. Or like, oh, well, you know, some of these people, you know, think that cops are killers. And that's 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 bias. Oh. Is it? Because cops are literally killers and they're murdering people on the streets right now. Yeah, but that's an unbiased thing to say. You have to come with a neutral perspective. Like, that's... And that's, I mean, that's just an excuse. Like, they, they make those statements specifically to make sure that black and brown people don't get on the jury. And it's an all-white jury. And, you know, psych psychologically, people are... Go it, it's, it's tribal bullshit, you know? It's tribal bullshit that uh, the, the white person is going to side with the other white person. It, it's it's just they're they're honing into like you know the base level kind of shit like this base level instinct that we have like oh that thing looks like me i should support that thing fucking stupid but that sort of racism is allowed within the legal system so again the legal system is a fucking joke Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar 
or a, a pay what you want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a-moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.